In Tuesday's video about Patchwork, I described that it seemed like we've been seeing little to no DLC at all throughout these past few weeks, especially on my channel. And so, at the end of that video, I promised you all a video on DLC, specifically a video on one singular player who pilots a DLC character, going over that player and not any one specific tournament. Well, I presume you've all seen the thumbnail and title, so there's no point in hiding it anymore. Today we'll be fully talking about Tsubaki, the Japanese Joker man that has stolen the hearts of viewers across the world. Today we'll be covering the highlights of Tsubaki's professional Smash career, all the way from his first breakout performance to his time in the spotlight at Japan 24, all the way to his most recent tournament and best performance in a long time, Tsubaki's run at Tamasuma Kyoka. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Real quick before we start, just a reminder that if you'd like to support my content, you can become a supporter on my Patreon or a member on this channel. Links to both in the description, and subscriptions on both start at just 99 cents per month. Alright, let's get started. For this video, we'll be going in chronological order for Tsubaki's tournaments, but we're not going to cover every tournament Tsubaki has ever been to. Instead, we'll cover tournaments in which Tsubaki had a notable placement, an SPR of at least plus two, and also had more than 100 entrants, with some exceptions like Japan 24, which was an invitational and therefore only had 24 entrants, and Ripubura SP6, where Tsubaki won as the first seed and therefore had an SPR of zero. Without further ado, let's get started with the first tournament we're covering today, Numasuma 7. Our story starts on June 6, 2022. This is the date that Tsubaki attended the first tournament we're covering today, Numasuma 7, which was Tsubaki's fourth ever tournament, at least fourth ever tournament logged by PG stats and smash data from Start GG information. Tsubaki went into Numasuma 7 as the 11th seed and made good progress throughout the tournament, but then went up against Shion, the ZSS, who was the third seed of the tournament. <laughs> In one of his first ever big upsets, Tsubaki defeated Chion and moved on, but unfortunately lost his next two matches in winner's semis and loser's quarters for a final placement of fifth, although the winner's semi set was a game five, meaning that Tsubaki could have gone even further. For our next tournament, we're going to be looking at Kadisuma SP13. This tournament was actually very similar to Numasuma 7, the one we just talked about. Tsubaki came into the tournament as a 12th seed, one lower than the last one, and made a great run in the tournament. While Tsubaki didn't defeat any players that American audiences are likely to recognize, I find that the most notable thing about this tourney run in particular was the length of it, since Tsubaki had to go on a long and grueling losers run in the tournament, with Tsubaki getting 8 wins throughout the tournament. Tsubaki, in pools, won his first set before losing his second and then winning his third to make it out of pools, loser's side of top 32. Tsubaki tore through losers, winning four sets in a row to make it into top 8. Once in top 8, Tsubaki won two sets, one of them in a 3-0 and another in a 3-1, making it to loser semifinals against Komugiko, the fifth seed of the tournament. <laughs> In the end, Tsubaki would lose to Komugiko in a game 5, getting a final placement of 4th as the 12th seed. Komugiko, by the way, would actually go on to win the entire tournament, defeating Dio to win the tournament, so Tsubaki lost to 1st place. This tournament was crazy because of the insane losers run that Tsubaki made, and he outplaced his seed in the progress. For our next tournament, we're taking a trip back to Numasuma for Numasuma 8. Numasuma 8 is a landmark tournament for our hero today, as this was the first tournament that we've covered where Tsubaki was a top 8 seed, coming into the event as the third seed. However, Tsubaki wouldn't be satisfied with just third, and Tsubaki's run at Numasuma 8 can only be described as a sweep. Tsubaki made it into top 8 easily, only dropping two games in the process. Now in top 8, Tsubaki defeated Kakishima 3-1. Moving into winners finals versus Lai, a Korin main who was actually on an insane run of their own, as Lai was the ninth seed all the way here in winners finals. But the two threw down in what would prove to be a close set. <laughs> Ganze 
ミへ着地に取っていく落として落としてようこそしてヒートここは逆に勝っていく動かさないで宇垣選手縦展開から全復帰選手を絶対とがめていく落としてフリーで勝ってるそこだゲームセット決めに決めていくっていうところはやっぱエロア選手のスタイルなのかなっていうところもありますけれどもベビーすごこれ何でも持ってくるあと運営に上げてエロア選手が本当トに返してリニーでかりおーっとポーリッチスーバー選手狙ってワンストックリードなかなか戻ってくるときにカウンターされるとねやっぱりきついなっていうところはありますけれどもダンねエロ選手ここは戻りに横スマッシュスーバーチ選手か In the end, Tsubaki won against Lai, moving into Grand Finals winner's side. Here, Tsubaki would have to face Gungir, who would come up from loser's side. And if Lai had been on an insane run, oh my goodness, Gungir is something else entirely. Gungir was the 29th seed of the tournament, now all the way in Grand Finals. All as, get this, a solo Ganondorf main. I know, right? I couldn't believe it either. It was up to Tsubaki to stop the Demon King from claiming the tournament for himself, and Tsubaki was ready for the challenge. Okay. こちらもそうですね注目するスマッシュジャンプで貸してる追い出されてあっゲームセットー勝ったのは椿選手おめでとうございます In the end, Tsubaki defeated Gungnir in 3-0 and won Numasuma 8 from winner's side. This was the second reason that Numasuma 8 was a landmark tournament for Tsubaki. It was the first tournament he ever won. But that milestone had been crossed now, and it was only up from here in terms of difficulty of opponents that Tsubaki would have to go up against. Next up, we have Grand Slam 12. And stop everything, cut the music. I need you to see what came up when I searched for VODs for this tournament. Look, that's the VOD. Like, the main stream. That's the thumbnail they used. VGBC could never. Anyway, Tsubaki came into the event as the fifth seed, making it into top eight easily, only dropping one game. It was here, though, that Tsubaki went up in winner's semis against a name that you all finally recognize Kept, the best villager in the world and the one seed of the tournament. <laughs> In the end, Tsubaki won 2 0 over Kept, moving on to winner's finals, where Tsubaki won in a clean 3 0. This puts Tsubaki in grand finals versus Keiru, who plays Mr. Game Watch. Tsubaki defeated Keiru 3 1, winning Grand Slam number 12 as the fifth seed, only dropping two games the entire tournament. Tsubaki was on a roll now. Now we get to our next tournament, Seibugeki number 12. Now, Tsubaki actually doesn't have any VODs for this tournament, not on the mainstream and not on the sidestream, so the background footage for this segment will be behind the scenes of Seibugeki 12, which, just like every VOD I'm using in this video, will be linked in the description. But if there aren't any VODs for Tsubaki, why cover this tournament at all? You'll see in a sec. Tsubaki came into the event as the 66th seed and started off the weekend by making it through pools, defeating Wabu 2 0 Takuman 2 1, and Mia 2 0. Oh, I'm sorry, was that just a double take I heard from you? Yeah, Tsubaki just casually 2 0 s Mia in pools. Believe me when I say I scoured the earth for this set, but I couldn't find it anywhere, much to my dismay. But it would be impossible to overstate the significance of this upset. This is the 66th seed defeating the second seed and perhaps the second best player in the entire country. After Tsubaki pulled off this massive upset, Tsubaki moved into top 64, where he immediately lost 2 0 to Yuzu, a Rosalina man. In losers, Tsubaki notably defeated Kamisuke, 2 0, and then beat Nada, 2 0, before losing to Akikiksu in a decisive game 3 for a final placement of 17th. While Tsubaki didn't make a flashy top 8 finish, Tsubaki did pull off what was undoubtedly the best upset of the tournament and made SPR of plus 4 in the process. By the way, as a side note, after losing to Tsubaki in pools, Mia proceeded to make a 15 set losers run to win the entire tournament over Umeki in grand finals. 
Look at how many sets Mia had to win. I zoomed out on this page to 25% in order to take this screenshot, and you can't even read it. Sorry, that just kind of broke my brain for a minute, and I needed it to break yours, too. Now we move on to our next tournament, Japan 24. This is the tournament that you've all likely heard of before, and where most overseas viewers first became aware of Tsubaki. You may even consider it his breakout performance, at least in the sense that it allowed Tsubaki to break out from a hidden Japanese boss into a globally known player. Tsubaki came into this 24-player invitational as the 19th seed. Japan 24 was sorted into six-person round-robin pools, objectively the best pools format IMHO, with the top two of each pool moving into final bracket winner side, the middle two moving into final bracket loser side, and the bottom two being eliminated entirely. For Tsubaki, pools was a rough start, with Tsubaki losing 3-1 to Hikaru and losing two Game 5 sets to Omuatsu and Italia. However, Tsubaki did win two sets in pools, beating Kept 3-1 and Hikachan 3-0. This meant that Tsubaki finished third in his respective pool, moving on into final bracket, but doing so from loser's side. Tsubaki moved into the final bracket for Japan 24, where Tsubaki made the loser's run of a lifetime, and you know, I could go over each and every set that he won doing a montage or a clip for some of them, but we're mixing things up today anyway, so how about I go crazy and make one massive montage for Tsubaki's entire loser's run? Yeah, let's do that. じゃあもう負けると空中飛行。これがいいだろう。ここでスイカで。これ。ここで。ファイティングがあるせいのが出てきて、まずはこの2ストップ目を。走っていきたいのは。ウェイビングで耐えて。うまい。うまい。次のあ
強くなられるから、下手に残っています。うん、時間を使って、これはこれはどうだイエンスバキーズ run was stopped in a close game 5 set by k a m e m e with Subaki having four game 5 sets back to back, managing to edge out victories against Ashima, Rizayasu, and Masha before their loss to k a m e m e for a final placement of fifth. I've talked about it before, but it's hard to understand how this run pushed Subaki into the limelight of the world's eyes. Even though a c o l a would end up winning the event, no one was talking about that. No, everyone was all about Subaki now. There are countless videos with hundreds of thousands of views talking about Subaki, montages that were dedicated to him, watch parties like Hungry Boxes that heavily featured him, and high level players of Joker like Mars and Void analyzing the play to judge Subaki's skill. It felt like Subaki was all the rage after Japan 24, and with all the videos dedicated to him, I suppose you can add this one right here to the list. However, after Japan 24, Subaki would somewhat disappear from the limelight in the time following his breakout performance. But Subaki didn't stop competing or stop placing. It just seems like people lost interest after Japan 24 and Subaki. At least for now. Our next tournament is Grand Slam 13, which Subaki entered into as the sixth seed. Subaki swept bracket early on before losing to Jogibu 2 0, dropping down into losers extremely early. But Subaki was able to make it to top 8, albeit having two decisive sets on the way. Interestingly enough, once he was into top 8, Tsubaki seemed to have a much easier time, defeating lots of old foes that he had bested on the battlefield already, having a 3 0 win over Maja and a 3 1 over Keiru, both of whom we've talked about earlier. From here, Tsubaki went up in losers' finals against Miya. In the end, Tsubaki ended the set with a nasty clip, defeating Mia 3 1. It seems to me as if the second best in Japan is developing a bit of a bracket demon in the form of the great thief of hearts, Tsubaki. Unfortunately for our hero, Tsubaki would lose 3 1 in grands to Jogibu, the person who sent him to losers in the first place, for a final placement of second. From here, Tsubaki had a series of smaller placements. Good placements, to be sure, with impressive wins, but this period of time was filled with much less flashy tournament placings. Tsubaki had a good showing at Ripubura SP6, a tournament where Tsubaki won as the first seed, notably defeating Raito and Shogun in grand finals on his way to the crown of the tournament. Tsubaki also got second place as the fourth seed at Numasuma 9, continuing his streak of placing top 8 at Numasumas, defeating everyone except for Takara, who Tsubaki lost 2 3 1 in winners' finals and in a game 5 in grand finals. The final of this silent, albeit consistent, period of tournaments for Tsubaki is Grand Slam No. 14. This tournament was more interesting than our previous two, however. This is because, after Tsubaki made it through pools, Tsubaki immediately lost his first match of Top 96, losing 2 0 to Silicon. Tsubaki then proceeded to make a 9 set losers run and got a streak of 5 incredibly impressive wins, defeating Ryo 3 0, Kairu 3 0, Karage 3 1, Dio 3 2, and finally Noi 3 1 in losers finals in order to make it into grand finals losers side. The person waiting for him there. Was Mia. Unfortunately, for the first time in this video, Tsubaki lost to Mia 3 1 for a final placement of second, Mia seemingly overcoming his bracket demon in Tsubaki. These three placements that we've discussed are the most notable from a period of time where Tsubaki racked up very quiet but very consistent good placings. Yes, Tsubaki was winning against great players and placing very well, but Tsubaki hadn't captured that sense of wonder from overseas that Japan 24 had granted him. Tsubaki needed another performance to turn the heads of the world, and Tsubaki would find it at Seibugeki 14. And while I would now normally cover Tsubaki's run at Seibugeki 14, I actually made an entire video about that tournament specifically, this one right here. I'm not going to waste anyone's time by going over stuff that I've already covered, but if you haven't seen this video, go watch it. After this one, that is. The basic gist is that Tsubaki made it into winners' finals by beating Shuton in semis, lost to Akola in winners' finals, and then lost to Shuton in the runback for third as the seventh seed. For our purposes today, this tournament, and especially his win over Shuton, was the mark of a turning point for Tsubaki. Tsubaki had turned a few heads with this placement at a fairly important tournament, but Tsubaki had only turned a few of them. For Tsubaki to turn the heads of the world, he needed to go even further beyond. And Tsubaki did just that. Now, finally, we're at our final tournament for today the tournament that made me make this video and the tournament that happened just this past weekend. 
Tamasuma Kyokan, number 3. A nearly 200 entrant Japanese regional with names such as Shutan, Su, Nao, Mia, and other names such as Hurt, Shion, and of course, Tsubaki himself attending. This tournament shaped up to be one of the most stacked of this past weekend. Tsubaki came into the event as the fifth seed, but Tsubaki knew this was his chance to turn the heads of the world once again, and boy did Tsubaki not waste it. To start off the weekend, Tsubaki swept through a total of four sets without dropping a single game. It was here though that Tsubaki had to go through what I call the Mario Gauntlet. Why do I say that? Well, because Tsubaki had to go through two Mario players, Nao and Tsuyaru. Nao was the fourth seed of the tournament, and is probably the one of these two Marios that you recognize. Tsuyaru was the ninth seed of the tournament and had gone on a small upset streak to make top eight. But not only that, both of these sets actually went down to a game five, with Tsubaki truly being put through the Mario Gauntlet. But get through it, Tsubaki did, moving on into winner's finals against Shuton. Now, Tsubaki and Shuton had just played at Sebugeki 14, where Tsubaki beat Shuton in winners, but lost the run back in losers, both sets being extremely close and going hit for hit. But this set was a different story. <laughs> Tsubaki defeated Shuton in winners finals in a dominant 3-0, finishing with a 3 stock. But Shuton wasn't out just yet, as Shuton defeated Hurt in losers finals to go back up against Tsubaki for one more shot at him. But the great thief was in no mood to lose. Tsubaki defeated Shuton in another dominant 3-0, ending it with a spike during a percent deficit, stealing both our hearts and the crown of Tamasuma Kyoka number 3. Tsubaki first came into the limelight with his placement at Japan 24, and while his placements before and afterward are impressive and deserve praise, nothing else had quite topped that level of flair and international recognition that Japan 24 had granted. Until Tamasuma Kyoka, that is. With such a dominant performance that can only be called a sweep, it's no doubt that Tsubaki is on the rise, his sights set even higher for whatever mark he decides to target next. That's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this very out of format type video from me. I quite liked doing it, although I must say getting the VODs for this video was a bit of a pain. Real quick, I'm going to be going live right here on my channel at 2pm CST. Come say hi, I'd love to see you stop by. Before I go, shout out to my patrons Seth Laster and Firescold333, as well as my YouTube members Storm Troiper, Loco Soco, and Mattoon. This weekend, Get On My Level 2023 is happening, and I'll be doing a watch party of it right here on my channel on Sunday night. Come tune in for that. And come Tuesday next week, be sure to check in for my analysis on Gommel 2023. Until then, I've been Mr. Mice, and thank you all so much for watching. <laughs>